Hey there, everybody. It's Melanie Benson here for Profit Amplifier Secrets Live. I am super excited about today's, uh, our topic today. It's like, it's almost like everybody I know <laughs> is having a similar challenge, a similar issue, and we're going to deep dive into clearing out some of the money blocks and really like, let's up level. Let's take things to a whole new level of what's possible around money, around success. So here's how today's going to work. We have some uh, really amazing like breakthrough opportunities here. We're going to start with, I want to share what I call three vital shifts that we need to make in our money mindset to propel prosperity into our lives in a bigger way. And then my dear friend and special guest, Lisa Thomas, is coming on at 4.30. And she's going to uh, go a little bit deeper with how like energy blocks work and what might be happening for you with your energy blocks and do some live clearings. And you do not want to miss this. Um, whether you get into the spotlight today, which uh, the Awaken Leadership Mastermind and our Own Your Bold community uh, get to get into the spotlight, but you can actually share what you want cleared right here in our Facebook thread. And I will bring it into the clearing with Lisa. So she's she's so talented, like whether you're here live or you're just listening in and participating and sharing your thoughts as you go, it, it works on both levels. So let me dig in. And for those of you that have joined in, hi, I see you here. I will bring you on in a little bit when we get uh, ready for Lisa. But um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the mindset shifts that I think are up for people right now. And think of this like we're going to lay the foundation for Lisa to come in and clear what's in the way. These three mindset shifts that I want to invite you to take are up for so many people right now. It's almost like summer stirs up this, these mental mindset blocks around money. It starts to trigger a lot of people's fears. Um, we all know that summer can bring up slumps, not for everybody, but for a lot of people. And it's also a time where people are kind of in this recharge mode. And so if you're trying to grow your cash flow during the summer, it can actually trigger a lot of fear and frustration. And I know some of you have been like, okay, things are not working the way I'd hope. Just know that when you have the energy, the state of mind of prosperity, things change radically. It's literally like you can work as hard as you want, but if your energy is not tuned into the right prosperity station, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, it's, it's like you can do all the right things and nothing works. I personally had huge shifts in my life by clearing out uh, both known and unknown energy blocks around money. And everything starts with the messaging that you give yourself, okay? So here's shift number one. Shift number one is retraining your brain for possibility. Now here's why it's so important, because I know this is probably like a duh moment, right? Like, of course we need to do that. But here's what I'm seeing happen for a lot of people is you have actually trained your brain to focus on all the things that don't work. You've trained your brain to uh, lead with fear. You've trained your, your brain to allow obstacles to derail you. And some people have trained their brain to like let distractions steal their time and attention away from the things that actually would really be bringing in more income, bringing in the results you want. And so here's what I mean by retrain your brain for possibility. I wanna come back to a principle of what you focus on expands. Okay, so what you put your attention on is what will grow. And this, we can take this down to the simplest level of, look, if you wanna grow your, your Facebook followers and you're not spending any time on Facebook, it's probably not gonna happen. If you wanna, uh, have 10,000 followers on Instagram so you can hit some of those magical, uh, you know, things that Instagram will do once you hit 10K and you're not doing the activities in Instagram that attract followers, then it's never going to work. It's the same thing with sales. If you're having fear or you're feeling 
um, like, oh, I don't know if I have the, something that people want to buy or who's going to listen to my Facebook live or whatever. And you're shying away from the very activities that will get you in front of the ideal clients, then you will not get the results you want. What you focus on expands. What you put your attention on is what grows. So are you focused on all the reasons it won't work or it can't work or you're not capable or you know, all the distractions, or are you focused on the reasons it will? These are really subtle shifts. I want you to think the smallest hinges open the biggest doors. And what's probably blocked for you right now is so simple and so like it's right in this little pocket of clarifying where your focus is and what you're putting your attention on that when you make these shifts, you'll see huge improvements. Now, if you have ever been through my Money DNA 2.0 program, then you know that I'm a huge fan of recoding. I'm a huge fan of getting the fears and the conflicts and the doubts and the limiting beliefs out on the table, clearing the impact they're having on you and creating a new set of mindsets, like a new set of, of internal dialogues that actually align with your goals. And for some people, you have to clear out some hidden energy blocks, which is where Lisa's coming in a little bit, in order to make those things stick. So we sometimes we have to work on both layers. Now, I want to share a resource with you. I'll share it again a little bit, just in case, but we have a quiz we've put together. If you want to take the quiz, it might help you start to see where some of these what I call hidden profit trains are lurking. So you can head over to rewiredforwealth.com and that will give you access to the, uh, the specific questions to uncover where you're really blocked. And if you've done it before, great. Then I hope you'll stay tuned for Lisa in a little bit because she'll help clear these uh, blocks out that might be in the way. So shift number one is really commit to the brain retraining. Let me just give you a little neuroscience for a minute, because I love the science of it. This is not just like airy fairy stuff. There is actual neuroscience behind why we have to retrain our brain. Many of us grew up in situations and with events that cause us to have like pull back when things get good or to have a fear cause us to get paralyzed. And there's this, um, saying you probably heard before that uh, situations that fire together, wire together. So if you've had a bad experience around money or you heard people talking negatively about people with money or you've had some kind of bad situation happen around having money anywhere in your history, it may have gotten fused with the activities that you need to do to grow your business. And so what happens is the neurons in your brain fire, like procrastinate, right? Instead of take action, it's hold back. Instead of do whatever it takes, it's stay comfortable. So you're probably having some neurons that have been trained to fire in a path that's not serving you where you want to go next. It may have been working at some point, but it's not now. Okay. So retrain your brain for possibility instead of protection. All right, so I'll check in in your questions in a minute, but I want to cover a couple more of these before we get going. Shift two, master the art of being resourceful. So what does that mean? And why is this so important if you want to be more prosperous? I think what happens for many of us, especially if we don't grow up in an environment where resourcefulness is rewarded, is we we are limited in what we believe we have access to. So I wanna give you a couple questions. I want you to write them down. When you're feeling blocked from being able to create wealth and abundance, for being able to achieve success in any endeavor in your life, I want you to start being more resourceful and being resourceful means you're curious. It means you're creative. It means you can be innovative. It means that you are finding ways it will work instead of ways it won't work. And one of the best questions you could ask yourself is what would have to happen for me to get what I need and want? It's just that simple. See, when we are not resourceful, we ask ourselves really poor questions and we do things like, 
uh, sabotage our own success because we think we say things like I can't afford it or um, this isn't the right step for me or I don't know how to make it work. So you just don't like the mind can't be creative when we have it you know, stuck in that gear. So you have to ask yourself better questions. The mind when put towards a problem to solve will find a way to solve it if you let it. So you wanna ask yourself better questions to trigger resourcefulness. Okay, so here's a couple other ones. Who do I have to become where this would be easy? Right? Like, who, who would I have to be right now for this to be easy instead of feeling hard? Okay, would I have to be uh, more committed? Would I have to be more resilient? Would I have to be more confident? And then do I know anybody that does this easy already that I could learn from? Another question is, um, what's really in the way? Again, this is where you want to go back to the quiz I shared earlier. What's really in the way? Is it is it real or is it the thing I'm making up about it, right? So what's really in the way? And then like, here's a really practical thing to do is make a list of the things in the way and then create an action plan to resolve them. Well, I don't have the finances. Well, let's find them, right? Uh, okay, so I don't actually know what to do. Well, hire a coach and let's figure it out. So don't let not knowing become the block. To get really clear, be willing to kind of put the, you know, kind of part the clouds a little bit and get connected to what's really in the way, take an inventory and then start tackling them one by one. And here's the last question. So think of this like a bonus question. It's been a very, very powerful question for me personally at times. And that is what have I been unwilling to do that if I did it, this problem wouldn't exist anymore. Think about that one for a minute. What would I have, what have I been unwilling to do that if I was willing to do it, this problem wouldn't exist anymore? So usually there is a solution. We've just been unwilling to do anything about it. And like really embracing that could unlock a lot of doors today. And maybe it's not about you are having cash flow problems, but you've been trying to get to that next level. This is a really powerful question for getting to that next level. All right, so shift number one was retrain your brain for possibility. Shift number two is master the art of being resourceful. Let's tackle this last shift before we bring Lisa on in a little bit. Conquer your confidence crushers. So I have been coaching for almost 20 years now. And many of the people coming on the call have been coaching with me for years, if not uh, quite a few months now. And what I know is that behind every uh, thing that you're not doing yet that you know would work is a confidence issue. It's you on some level not believing that you can have it or that you can do it, that you're capable of it, that you deserve it. Uh, this is where imposter syndrome comes in. If you've caught this week's episode of Amplify Your Success podcast, uh, you'll, you'll see um, five really, really, really amazing stages everybody goes through. And one of them is imposter syndrome. It's the reality that many of us, as we're pushing up against what we know, will start to feel like an imposter and we'll question whether or not we can really do this next level. So again, if we really work on the retraining of our brain, what if every time you hit one of those confidence issues, you see it as a good thing instead of a bad thing? It's like, I don't know how to do this. Oh my gosh, I must be growing. I must be really pushing up against my zone of what I, what I know. And that means I get to learn and grow again. What happens for a lot of people is they bump up against the confidence area and they go, oh, I don't know how to do this. Oh, that's going to take a lot of work. I don't know. And now you've talked yourself out of doing the thing that would work instead of talking yourself into doing what will get you what you want. So here's a couple of things to ask yourself. Are you setting bold goals and taking bold action? So what does that mean? Like, 
So it means you're doing something that you don't know how to do and that is a little stretchy. <laughs> My friend Lisa Mannion always said like, you know, we want to get stretchy. It's like, all right, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm terrified, but I'm going to do it anyway because I know it's taking me where I need to go next. It's about willing to not have it all figured out and do it anyway. It's about um, becoming the person who can do it rather than defining what's possible based on what you already know. So maybe it's time to start taking, setting some bolder goals and taking some bolder action. I have found that anytime I'm stuck, anytime that I'm holding myself back for any reason, it's because I have a fear that is greater than my commitment to the goal. And what breaks me free is taking a bold action. Okay, so uh, the other thing is sometimes you need to simplify your focus, okay? Think of it like if your, your goal, if your vision or what you want to do is so big and there's so many moving parts and there's so many things that are terrifying you, it is really easy to like get paralyzed. And if your magic recipe is to take smaller steps forward, know that small wins multiplied and compounded creates massive momentum. And it's not about whether you're taking big, bold action or small, consistent action that takes you to the win. It's about not letting yourself get paralyzed. Okay, so sometimes you need to simplify your focus and just pick the one thing, the one thing you'll focus on to create some momentum around. Okay, so confidence crushers are things that actually demotivate you instead of inspire you. Confidence crushers are almost always defined in your story you make up about a situation. Okay, so let's take a couple of situations and then I'm gonna actually start bringing on some of our guests that are joining in and see uh, if they have anything that, you know, in the work we've been doing, they wanna share that can lend into this or they have any questions. But let's look at it like this. If you let a confidence crusher derail you, then you actually have taken yourself out of the game. You have the ability to create any story or any framework. You can define things, events any way you want. When you're defining them as a failure, you're defining them as, as a bad thing, it will crush your confidence. If you're defining them as a learning or you're defining them as a growth moment, or you're like, okay, well, that wasn't fun, but let's see, what can I learn from it? Then you expand into the next level of who you need to be. I, uh, I love when people come to me with sales questions, like Melanie, like I want to enroll more people and they're not actually setting appointments and they're not really doing the work to pull people in. Because what I find almost always is there's a confidence crusher at work. There's a, I don't know if I have something people want, or I don't know how, or I made a bunch of sales calls and nobody signed up. So we have an opportunity to look at those situations and say, what do I need to learn? What do I need to master so that this is better? That, so I can be better at this rather than withdrawing and getting paralyzed and not doing anything with it, okay? So these are three really valuable shifts. Retrain your brain for possibility, master the art of being resourceful, conquer your confidence crushers. And if you're looking for like, okay, Melanie, so how do I start with all this? I would highly recommend you take the quiz. It's free, it'll take you two minutes. You can find it at rewiredforwealth.com. When you take the quiz, you'll be given an opportunity to put your information in and what it'll do is it'll take you to your answers for the way, you know, what the quiz deems as your primary hidden profit drain. And then you're also going to get access to my book, Rewired for Wealth. It's a downloadable book. And I think it'll really help you start to look at how do you do the retraining? What do you really need to do to recode and rewire the way your mind is working around money, about getting to that next level and about success? So just know that if you want to get to the next level, you've been feeling blocked, you're stuck, uh, maybe like you're having really inconsistent cash flow, or just simply you love being on the edge of what's next for you. This rewiring and recoding 
this part of it is so powerful. Like I could never have gotten to the level of success I, I was able to achieve from doing it on my own. Like I had to hire mentors. I had to get into masterminds that challenged my thinking. And I had to learn how to change the way my brain worked around money, around success, and around doing something like this that's so visible and it requires so much energy to hold space for other people. So, you know, I, I love sharing what I've learned around this and I hope it'll help you with shifting some things. So um, I saw a couple of people asking like, all right, what's the URL again? It's rewiredforwealth.com. Okay, so we'll be bringing Lisa on in a minute and I'm gonna start bringing on some of my guests. Uh, these are members of the different coaching programs here. And I'm excited to have them joining us today because uh, they're going to be able to bring some firsthand uh, requests. Uh, ladies, I'm going to bring you in. And now if you are, um, I'm going to promote you to panelists. If you are listening in right now in the group and you're like, okay, hey Deb, uh, how do I ask my question? So there's gonna be a couple things. Now, if you are in Own Your Bold and you forgot to register, you wanna definitely register, okay? And for those of you that are, um, hi, Kamala, I see Kendra here. And if you're listening in as, as a member of the mastermind or in the Own Your Bold and you forgot to register, please go back into the member area. You'll see the information there. So ladies, we're talking about um, all of the shifts, all of these, you know, like the stuff that comes up about making more money and more success. And I know you're excited to do the clearing with Lisa in a little bit. I just want to go ahead and bring you on. Um, you know, if there's any like ahas or anything you want to say about these three mindset shifts or anything that you've been working on that you think would be valuable to others who are listening in today, just let me know, I'll bring you on. Uh, and I want to just do a quick check-in and you can just write in the chat if anybody wants to come on. Let's do a quick check-in. I'm going to, uh, hey, Chris McPeak. <laughs> so Anne saying, I wish there was a vaccination against money blocks. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, you know, and the really good news is that you can actually break through a lot of those money blocks when you do the energy work and you do the mindset work. So sometimes people need a re-inoculation. <laughs> they need to go and do the work again because here's something really interesting. And I know many of you ladies who are joining me today, you've experienced this firsthand. You hit new levels of money barriers as you become more successful in your business, right? So it's some, almost this thing of like, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And sometimes when you tackle that next level of success, like new fears, new um, kind of like energy drains and blocks and things come up that didn't didn't happen before. So, and sometimes you need to get re-inoculated. Uh, hey, Denise, I see Denise Wakeman here too. So if you know there's something that you wanna clear um, feel free to pop it into the chat here and I'll add it into the list. I know some of you have already worked with Lisa before, so you know the magic she can help create. It's Anne saying, it seems like I'm always doing some work about money. I think everybody does. So here, let's like bust a couple of myths while we're waiting for Lisa to come on. Um, oh, I see we have some more people coming on. Let's see, let me... Make sure we've got everybody. Okay, great. Okay, good. I think we're everybody. So, um, and if I'm not bringing you on, just know that uh, we may have some time later to bring on some of the people who are not yet in the mastermind, but uh, you are welcome to put in the chat any questions you have and I'll, I'll tackle them. So let me tackle one of the myths. And I think sometimes different mentors might kind of bring this myth out in us. And that is we think if we do the money mindset work once, we never have to do it again. Has anyone ever like kind of bought into that myth? Like, uh, yeah, so I should have this down already, right? Like I teach this stuff. Why am I having to learn it again? So let's just peel this apart for a minute because it's so good. And I'm so glad you brought this up. Money is energy, right? Money is literally energy. 
and we are energy. And so sometimes, like Lisa will talk to us about in a little bit, we will find that energy gets blocked with things that happened before, you know, we came in, like it could be our parents, it could be our ancestors, like energy just gets blocked somehow. We adopt the ancestral belief systems that were passed down, right? So sometimes it's that. Sometimes we're blocking energy right here and now because our beliefs are incongruent on some level with the outcomes we want for ourselves. Now that doesn't mean we can't have it. It doesn't mean it's not our thing to have. It means we need to recode the way we are looking at something and release the block in our thought processes. Okay. And so again, I'll share that the quiz I offered earlier can be a great way to peek into that and start to see, okay, well, I actually have some conflicts. I think if I have more money and success, I'm going to have to work more and I don't want to work more. So why would I want more money and success? Right? So we start to kind of have some ideas collapse together. Uh, the other thing that happens is that we will, um, we will make up a definition of something and kind of lock into it that keeps us trapped. So we'll believe that something doesn't work for us or we can't have something or, you know, we'll, we'll uh, you know, we basically will create a trap for ourselves. And so those are some of the things that we do to ourselves every day that keep us blocked right here in the now. And sometimes let's take this bigger for a minute. It's not about the mindset. It's about the action. So once we have a mindset that says, yes, yes, I believe this. Yes, I, I'm congruent with this. I, I released my conflicts. I don't have any energy box. But if you're not taking aligned intentional action, then you'll find yourself getting trapped. So just know that um, sometimes it takes shining a, a flashlight right on what's really blocked for me and, and kind of having a new conversation about it that will help unravel it. All right, so we had a question coming in. This is from Rihanna, who's one of our new members. Welcome, Rihanna. We'd love to know what is blocking me from getting money, abundance, and fully stepping into my purpose work. Would love a clearing. Okay, we're putting it on the list for you, Rihanna. So stay tuned. Lisa will be here very soon. She's joining us at 4 30. Um, Deb, can we open up your line for a second? Sure. So, Deb, any new ahas, any any insights that you want to share? Because I know you've been so power, powerfully doing this work for a little while. I can relate to the idea of uh, having done or done the work and finished it and then redoing it still um and that there are for me there's just always like the story hasn't necessarily changed but I have a new connection about it when I revisit it again like oh this is what that really is keeping me stuck on or something so yeah. um I can relate to a lot of that and the idea of uh what, as you were talking, I was thinking, I don't like to be on the edge. So mm -hmm. that idea of, I like to be past the edge. So that space in between is where everything kind of comes up for me. And yeah, I'm so glad you said that. Cause it's almost like we get in this like vortex of like, I don't know how to do that next thing, right? Like yeah. I haven't mastered that yet. And when I'm in it, I usually feel good. It's like, oh, it's happening. Right. It's working. Everything's fine. But that, that unknowing or that the leap space maybe is where it's unsettling. So I'm always looking or I'd like to look at ways to shorten that, that leap and the time spent there because it's not good time for me. It's, it, it's challenging. Yeah. Those are great observations. Thank you. And so I'll come back in a little bit and ask you if you know what you want to do the clearing on. So you can just kind of let that muse around a little bit and check in like, what do you want? What do you believe is the thing you want cleared? So um, some people were asking, how do I know how, what I want to clear? Well, here's one thing to think about. What's the goal? What is the thing you want? And what feels like it's in the way? Like when you try to go achieve that goal, 
what gets in the way, what's stopping you. So is there a pattern? Are there fears? Do you have confidence issues? You know, Deb was mentioning like, you know, like sometimes she feels like there's a gap. Um, is there like not knowing how, what's getting in the way can sometimes be the clue to the clearing to ask for. So thank you, Deb, for jumping in. And I'm just going to do a little more checking in in the group. Um, uh, my fear around my business becoming the main income provider. I desire this yet scared I will fail. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think there's so many, so many layers here of powerful opportunity. So, and um, is it okay with you if I put this in for the clearing? Because fear is very powerful. Fear is actually one of those things that uh, it disguises itself as our logic mind. This is one of the things you'll learn in the quiz. And Anne and Denise were both just saying they took the quiz and it was very eye-opening. But when fear is disguised as logic, what happens is your rational, practical side will take over and it, it won't make sense logically. You're like, well, I don't have the money or I don't know how to do it, right? And that part of you that clings to knowing how to do something will take over and convince the part of you that is creative and innovative and resourceful that it's not the right time or this is massively uncomfortable, so let's not do it. <laughs> or it's inconvenient right now because I have these other priorities or I don't have time and you will buy into it. This is how powerful our minds are. So I just want to acknowledge all of you that are jumping in and sharing what you really want support around, what you want to clear, what you want to break free of, because here's what I know. Right now on this planet, we need to shine our light brightly. We need positive, powerful impact to expand. We need you to do what you do best because that when you're in joy and you're in love you're in the highest frequency that's capable of of being emitted and that is where transformation occurs so we need those of you that are committed to doing big powerful things in the world unblocked and feeling resourceful so you can go out and do more of this good work it's how prosperity expands so we can all tap into it so i saw a couple of other um, comments coming in i want to make sure i capture everybody's questions and requests. So I'm going to copy these over, but let me just make sure I saw, um, sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing all the comments all at once. Okay. I know there was another one in there. I will find it in a minute, but I just want to check in and see if we've had Lisa join us yet and make sure we can. And while we do that, Kamala or Kendra, do either you want to share anything that's come up for you around all this? You can just unmute your lines if you did. If you're like, don't call on me right now, it's okay. Just go like this. No, Melanie, do not call on me yet. <laughs> I am not ready for this. <laughs> okay, Lisa, I see you. Let's bring on the powerful Lisa. I'm bringing you on as a panelist, darling. Hello, Lisa. Let's <laughs> unmute Lisa. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Okay, so excited perfect. to see you. Me too. So we have some of my clients here that are very excited. We have some people that are uh, joining in uh, via Facebook and mm -hmm. are chatting it up here in the group. Welcome, 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 everybody. So um, Lisa, let's just set this up. Okay. And I've been gathering people's questions and what they want cleared that we'll bring in a little bit later. But Thank first you. of all, I just want to introduce you all to this magical, powerful woman that I know named Aww. Lisa Thomas. Thank you. She is uh, extraordinary on so many levels, but she has a gift. And if you did not catch the Amplifier Success podcast episode last week, let me just give you a couple highlights. So um, Lisa's gift on this planet is being able to clear what's called inherited energy blocks. And I will have her explain that in a minute. But let's just say that no matter what level of success you have, no matter what you have accomplished up to now, no matter how much money you have made or not made, that every single one of us can feel the impact 
of an inherited energy block at some point in our journey and then start to feel stuck, start to feel small, start to lose our confidence and our courage. And like literally you can have money flowing in and then it can stop <laughs> because an energy block has been triggered. So I've personally worked with Lisa and so have many of my friends. And we have found that sometimes when you're doing big work in the world, you need to have many tools in your toolbox. And one of them is somebody who can see energy that's blocked when you can't see it and help clear it out. So Lisa, thank you so much for joining me today to go deeper in all of this. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to help everyone. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> So Lisa, let's just bring everybody up to speed in case they didn't catch the episode. Okay. You define what an inherited energy block is and how the DNA epigenetics part of it works. Okay. So each of us has our own DNA code. That's what makes brown hair, blonde hair, green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes. Within the DNA code, we can't change that. But how the DNA expresses itself is within the epigenetics. Though that we can, they're called informational tags. And these are inherited patterns. So epigenetics and the expression of them is based on our ancestors' life, how they experienced it. And then those experiences get handed down, passed down through our cellular memory. Now, everybody in your family is not going to inherit the same patterns. And it's not always, if they did, it wouldn't necessarily show up the same way. But what's beautiful about this is that these informational tags, these inherited patterns, emotional DNA can be changed. It can be released so that um, you can show up in the world, do and do what you wanted to do and not have it be so complicated to get there. How's that? Double duty here trying to pick up the comments. Yes, that's okay. exactly what I want you to share. Okay. And I am so glad that you did share it because I think what I want everyone to realize is there's science behind this. Oh yeah. There is, this is actually not just energy floating out in the world, but it's mm -hmm. actually connected in our DNA and it can get lodged there. Mm -hmm. And one of your gifts is being able to, to release that stuck energy that, that's getting rooted in our bodies. Yeah. And it is nice that we can find some science around it. When I started doing my work, there was no scientific backing. So try, put yourself in my spot. For anybody that's afraid of putting themselves out there, can you imagine what I felt like when I had to say, I, I can clear inherited patterns and they'd be like, yeah, right. And who are you to do that? And what is that, where does that, where did you learn how to do this and whatever? But now there's this science to prove this, that it's very real. It's, it's just part of who we are. And there's no negative like association with it because we also inherit many wonderful things. We inherit our gifts. We inherit creativity. We inherit our talents from the same lineage, right? Our parents didn't pass it down. If you're a parent, you didn't pass it down to your kids on, pur on purpose we're not consciously aware of it. And we as children didn't do anything wrong. There's no karma. There's no bad karma going on here. Like, I just really wanna make that clear. This is just part of the evolution of who we are as a human being. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you, you distinguished that. So again, I just wanna give everybody plenty of opportunity to get their requests in. So if you're listening on Facebook, Denise, I saw your request. Thank you for reposting it. <laughs> It's kind of hard not to trigger the video going when you're yeah. when you're here. I didn't want to want the video playing. Um, so, can we just take a minute to talk about some of the ways this these blocks may be manifesting? If someone's not familiar with kind of checking in, is there an energy block? It may be manifesting in certain conditions or mindsets. Let's just give them some ways it might show up. Okay, how about I give some examples of clients Perfect. that are real life stories. <clears throat> so I was working with this woman who, well, I still am, but she's a single parent. She's in her late 40s. And she's, if you and I were to look at her, you, we would think you are successful. But she was just making ends meet every single month through paying the babysitter, 
paying her employees. She was not getting out of, and, and this is the problem. She was not implementing any ideas. So even her employees were frustrated with her. All right, this is how it showed up for her. She was overworking. She was just making ends meet and she couldn't make a decision. So there you go. She comes to me and I find an inherited pattern that went back just a couple of generations. And uh, what this did is it put this family member in the Great Depression. So it's a great one to have to show up. But this is the story. So I said, whoever this was lost everything. And she just was like, oh my gosh, Lisa. She goes, I know exactly what this is. He had a manufacturing plant, was extremely successful even during the depression, but he had a gambling habit. He was addicted to gambling. Hmm. So he gambled away the family fortune and his entire plant and lost everything. So this is how it was showing up in her life. It was showing up that every time she made a decision, she felt like it was life or death. She was going to lose it or like there was no confidence in her making a decision. That's how it showed up when we cleared this. OK, and I say we because it's not just me. I'm a facilitator, but the body does the work. You guys, you're going to your own body is going to connect when I connect and do, do the release. But when we did this, she literally doubled her income in like four months, because all of a sudden she could make decisions that had been on the table for, for a couple of years. So when she was able to take action, everybody's happy. Her employees are on board. She hired more employees. Everything got better in life. When we cleared away this fear of failure, fear of indecisive, this indecisiveness, fear of making a mistake, and the inherited pattern of um, feeling like you were gambling everything every time you made a decision based on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I hope I didn't just create. I'm trying to respond to you guys on uh, the Facebook thread. <laughs> and I think I triggered the video again. Sorry if it was annoying. Uh, Alita, I would love for you to post what you would like clear. This is such a powerful observation you're having. So repost, post what you would like cleared, and I'm going to add it in for Lisa to clear it today. Mm -hmm. um, Anne, I saw yours. Denise, I saw yours. Keep them coming in. Lisa, I see you're just joining in. Keep your post coming. Tell us what you want cleared. We'll add them all in. We'll start the clearing in just a minute. So maybe we could do one more example of um, mm -hmm. another client situation. Maybe okay. something that has to do with confidence or. Well, yeah, there's, there's, oh my gosh, I could talk forever about client examples because this is what I love doing. But let's put it now first person. See if you, this fits something that you're going through. You know you have a bright idea. You know you're good at what you do, but you spin your wheels getting ready to get ready. It's very common in the beginning of entrepreneurship, and it also shows up again when you're ready to go to that next level. So we all have upper limiting beliefs. It doesn't matter who it is. We all have upper limiting beliefs. It doesn't matter if we make 500 or a million a year. It doesn't matter if we're making our first 25,000. We have upper limiting beliefs that continually need to be cleared when we go to the next level. So you know you've got an inherited pattern per se, if you are aware that you're procrastinating like one of your parents did, or if sabotages come up like you don't return phone calls, you're self-sabotaging. If you are, like I said, always getting ready, if you are always taking care of everybody else but your business, but launching your business, but because everything else comes in and takes priority, there's a problem there. If you're not take, making income producing decisions in your life and taking action in income producing activities, there's a pattern. Those patterns don't have to stick around. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be this um, like uh, restricted, re, uh, difficult energy. It doesn't have to be. Business does not have to be complicated. Hmm. I love it. It is so true. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be no. overwhelming. It can be with ease and grace. Mm -hmm. And yes, it doesn't mean there's not work involved. Like we oh, yeah. all put effort in, mm -hmm. but how you kind of, how do you, how you like put your brain around that effort, like the way you feel about that effort will be different when your energy is clear. So Lisa, I think what I'd like to do is start uh, checking in with uh, our wonderful a group of ladies here and just get clear what they want their clearing around today. 
So um, you, we don't need a lot of. <laughs> I'm already work. picking up stuff. Just are you? <laughs> oh yeah. Some We're of you actually feel anymore. guilty making money. That's a family thing. That's the caring about what your family thinks. Oh okay. my gosh. We're going to clear well, some guilt. Okay. I will read the ones that have been posted. Perfect. By, uh, the different members, but I want to give each of you here a chance to say it out loud if you would like. Okay. You also just post it in if you're like, I, don't, I can't get on, you know, audio right now because if you're in a place that doesn't work. But um, Kendra, how about we check in with you first? Are you clear what you would like your, your uh, clearing around? Yeah, I think that when you said the, thank you for this, by the way, I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> oh, and do you want to just take a second and introduce yourself? Do you want to say what you do? You don't have to, if you're like, eh, I don't want anybody to know who I am. <laughs> Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm Kendra Lizzie. I do marketing and social media for cannabis and CBD businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that my biggest is completely just spinning, right? Like I love the adrenaline rush. I love the procrastination. I love working on everyone else's businesses, but not making all the decisions to find the clear path for mine. Okay. So hey, I have an idea. Can we hold that thought? Uh, Kendra, what if I get connected to everybody and we kind of clear as we go? Sure, totally. What about Absolutely. that? Because then I can help everybody at the same time. So this is what we need to do, all right, in order for me to do that. I need you to close your eyes, put your feet on the ground, and I need you to just take a deep breath in as if you're breathing up through your feet, okay? Up through your feet, all the way up through your hips and your lungs, coming all the way up through your throat chakra, all the way up through the top of your head. Now I want you to breathe coming back down through, bringing heaven's energy back down through the top of your head. Cleansing breath out. There we go. All the way back down through your feet. There we go. Now I'm going to say something. At the end of what I say, I need you to give me permission to work with you. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Accessing 100% spirit, accessing sabotages and accessing 100% soul on all levels and dimensions, past, present, and future. If you are in an agreement with allowing me to help and facilitate your healing process, say yes. Yes. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's start. Okay. Thank that you way, so, yeah. Because um, I, I was picking up with, with Kendra that, you she works really great in like a structured environment and then you're just free to take off and you soar but then when it's about you you're very uncomfortable about it so yeah thank yeah. you mm -hmm. so we're apparently going to do check-ins and simultaneous clearings and i will weave in all of the things that you ladies have been or everyone's been posting in the facebook group mm -hmm. uh, i want to address one thing that somebody asked a question about and they somebody's already asking like how would i work with lisa um, just know, I want to put everybody's mind to rest that when we're done with the clearings, um, Lisa have, has a couple resources we can share with you all if it feels right. Mm -hmm. And so just put that little kind of concern to rest for now. Let's just be fully present to the clearings and then we can uh, make sure everybody has what they need for moving forward. So Lisa, let's roll through the live audience and then we'll okay. pick up the ones that are being posted in the group. Okay. All right. So. Did I get that right, Kendra? Okay. And the truth is you can have your own business. And the other truth is you don't have to have your own business if you don't want to, but you do need to get paid your worth. So see, somehow you do, you feel more worthy to get paid if somebody else is paying you. But the problem is, is you're over delivering and you're really not get pay, getting paid everything that you do. So you see, it's a little bit of a trade-off here but you're not the only one that has some low self-worth going on, okay? And you're also a people pleaser. So- We have none of those here. <laughs> a none, right? So I'll do, um, so we can do it a couple different ways. Um, I can clear what I'm picking up and it'll clear from everyone that it pertains to. And then we can move on to the next one or I can make a list of things I'm picking up and do it all at the end. Which do you prefer, Melanie? That feels more aligned for me as long as it's okay for you. Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay, great. Um, thank you, uh, Kendra. And let's move to Kamala. Uh, while we're bringing Kamala on, I just want to acknowledge Rihanna is all the way from South Africa. It's very late there, so she's not getting on live with us. And 
Uh, Alita has joined. Hello, Alita. You can share in the chat what you would like cleared and welcome. So Kamala. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, I've listened to uh, your meditation a couple of times and I'm so ah. excited. So it's great. Okay. Um, I thought that my block was about earning, but as I did the meditations, it felt like I was getting something about my maternal side about not being able to ask for money, mm -hmm. not getting my, my skirts dirty and asking for business or asking for money. Um, in your throat chakra, okay, mm -hmm. I can feel a, a hesitancy to speak up and share about who you are. Now, you're a great defender of other people. If you need to defend for the, for the underdog, you are all about that, except for you. Okay, so how about we work on this, this belief that you can't be heard? And there's a fear of judgment going on there. I promise you other people on here are going to have a fear of judgment too. And so, and in the fear of judgment comes the fear of rejection. Because see, right now you're really safe in doing what you do because everybody knows you like this, okay, in, in the paradigm that they see you in. But in order for us to step out of our comfort zone, we have to do things that are uncomfortable. And you speaking up for yourself is very uncomfortable. Okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kamala. And um, Deb, let's move to you. And then I'll bring in the request from our community. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. Hi. Um, already so many things going through my mind. And um, one that just came to me today mm -hmm. for the first time is that uh, the feeling or that, that worthy people don't always get paid mm -hmm. the way they should. And I, I mean, I think that was my in my yeah. history, my family history. So, so what I'm picking up is that you feel like you've got these gifts and talents, but it doesn't really matter because no matter how hard you work, you're going to get left out in some way. You're not going to be seen. You're going to be misunderstood and you are being left out, even though you are plenty worthy of having equal or more than somebody else. It's a pattern of being left out. I'll help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so let me bring in, if it's okay, Lisa, to bring in yeah. the questions. Okay. Sure. Um, one of the requests that came in is can't seem to make enough money or get everything organized, even though I've been doing this business for decades. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me know when it's okay to move to the next one. Well, are they on? Do you want me to talk about no, that? No, these, these, this person I don't think is on that asked this question early on. Okay. Um, but I'm going to get to the rest of them if you, if you feel ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. Um, fear around my business becoming the main income provider. Uh, desiring it, yet feeling scared I will fail. And the feelings of discomfort when making offers for my programs in a life situation. Is that one question? It came from one person, yes. Yeah, so that's interesting if, so I'm honed in on the first part of it is, concerned that it'll become the main income provider. Does that mean that, like I'd love to have a conversation here, does that mean that if you make more money, then your spouse or your partner or whoever else contributes isn't going to make as much? Does it mean you're not gonna be in the role of being supported and helped and you're gonna to have to step up and do more? Because that's what I hear in that. I think if I, cause I know this person a little bit, yeah. I think I would interpret and let me know if I've got this wrong to the person who asked this, um, that there's a, all the pressure on me to be the income provider. Is there so, a partner? So see, you're saying the same thing that I Oh, said. okay. So apparently that, there were two right. questions in that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right? So the first part of that question is yeah. the, um, uh, the fear of being the income provider. And I think um, that this person, I think, my interpretation was the pressure of being the one who has to be the main income provider. So like what if it doesn't work. Is this male what or female fails? individual? Female. female. So yeah. she would rather live in in um, less than, so she doesn't have to be the main provider. Mm. So she really wants the indiv other individual to pull their weight. So a little bit of conflict there. Oh, there's a big conflict. This yeah. is conflict about roles and. Um, and, and being too powerful and have any other people depend on her. Mm -hmm. mm, powerful. Yeah. This okay, is a limiting good. belief. 
Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So the next one that came in, um, fear, uh, feelings of discomfort when making offers for my programs in a live situation. Live, like from stage or one-on-one -on -one with a person. Uh, I can't, I'm asking for clarification and I would imagine it's, um, one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's one-on-one -on -one too. Yeah. Yeah, let me know if I'm getting that right. Yeah, so when I'm picking up there, and this will be good for everybody, and I better write it down so I don't get in my zone and forget. It's the fear of not being accepted, which is, we can also use another word for that, and that's the fear of being rejected. So we'd rather just not accept the invitation to make that offer, because then we can't be rejected. So we are then being unaccepting of who we are, right? Right. If we can't stand, if we can't make an offer, then we are not accepting who we really are. Hmm. So she's afraid of rejection. I get it. Okay. But I promise you, you can get comfortable in the no. I promise you, you can. I promise you that you can be unattached to this response because you're going to get to a point where you will trust. This is what I do. It's just not the right time. I'm always here. It might be a right time later and I'm not attached, or it might not be a right fit for me. Like we get to say no, guys, who we work with. You don't have to take everybody that says yes. And oftentimes I think we don't speak up because we don't wanna take a certain individual. Well, I don't know that we're really aware of that, but we will hold ourselves back because we're afraid of drama or conflict or whatever it is. But I promise you, you can get comfortable in the no. Okay. So a couple more. These are really powerful, Lisa. <laughs> um, yeah, and and uh, Denise was clarifying it's in both situations, speaking, you know, live situations as well as like on the phone. But but instead of just like taking that safety route of using email, right? So, I think yeah, emails email is not as powerful. It's yeah. just not as powerful because people. I'll tell you what will help you. You have a voice thing too. Okay, you have some stuff in your like in here in your throat chakra, you even have some stuff in the lungs. And so what's that, what I'm feeling is from, from you is that you're oppressed. That's a very old fashioned word, oppressed. But think of it like you've got all these ideas and you know that it's in there, but, but you feel stuck. It's oppressed is the pattern of being held back, held down and, un, and change is very uncomfortable especially if you have to use your voice. Mm. But see, the power is in the voice because if somebody can hear you and they, then they can trust you. They can't trust you with an email. They can become curious. They can go find out more about you, but they need to hear you. So I really wanna give some encouragement and some confidence to, to speak it. And I'll release while I'm, I'm writing this down and you help me remember, Melanie, okay. I'm going to release energetic attachments to other people's opinions and judgments. Ooh, I think we all could use some of that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Alita's going, oh my gosh, this is so insightful. Get comfortable in the no. So really, the planning. Okay, really, because it might just not be the right time and not have anything to do about you. Mm -hmm. It's really... It can be about their uncomfortableness to invest money in themselves with you. Because I'll tell you what I've learned over the years. People will spend unlimited amounts of money for their children. Okay. Or for somebody else that needs it. But when it comes to spending money for ourselves, we feel selfish. We feel unworthy. We feel like everybody else deserves it but besides us. So if you're in the profession of service, that's just the way it is. It has nothing to do with you. They're just not the right time for them. And there'll be somebody else that has a higher vibration that believes in what you do. And I will write that down because that's an insight for you guys. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Right, I've got two more for you, Lisa. Fabulous. Bring them on. And then we're going to move into the clearing. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, there was the, uh, would love to know what is blocking me from getting money abundance and fully stepping into my purpose work. This is somebody who, uh, this is our lady from South Africa. Who, what does she do for a living? Um, she is, um, I think she's got, let's see, she wrote she it. type in? Uh, she's clairvoyant. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, yeah, and she, she feels not having 
that she doesn't have all her abilities open and activated yet. Uh, so she's not feeling like her purpose work is at its best possible. And so it's trans uh, transmuting into not feeling capable enough until but, all her abilities are open. But that's not true. That's a limiting belief. So right. what that tells me right there is sh you're living in smallness. Okay. And what living in smallness means is that you're afraid of being great. You're afraid and you're going to come up with all these reasons, which you're doing as to why you can't do what you're going to do. So I would love to know what, how you bring in money now, and then I can empower you there because there's also this belief that it's all or nothing. And that isn't true when it comes to life purpose, guys, our life purpose can change as we go through, as we change life purposes can meta, can morph into something else. The deal is to get into your true life purpose. You have to begin doing something. Okay. You just have to begin where you are, be true to yourself. And, and those things will manifest. If you're spiritually gifted and you have this gift of being clairvoyant, you got to start there where with whatever you are doing to bring in income. Do you know, can she, is she up? Is she awake? Can you ask her? Uh, what she's she does? Here. Yeah. So uh, she's, she's does, um, I think I remember her saying she does some kind of, um, healing work. She does, uh, some energy work of her own. So, yeah. so she is afraid oh, and she's still doing an office job right now. Healing part-time. She said, beautiful. See, there's that part. You can do more than one thing and be in your purpose. Hers is she gives everything away for free. I can tell you right now. Mm. All right. And I know that feeling I've been there and I've done that and it comes, it's lineage stuff. So there's two reasons we do it. Well, there might be more, but I'm picking up on two. One, there's an inherited belief that you cannot sell a spiritual gift. Okay. So what I want you to do is think of um, like famous actors, famous sports people that make money playing basketball and baseball guess what? That's a, that is a gift. And they have to be somewhat intuitive in this in order to really hone their profession, their skill. It's That's not really any different good. than you. Yeah. So there's this conflict between spiritual and prosperous. Um, she, I can tell she attracts people that have no money. Okay. And what I want to invite you to do is to create a day during the month that you just do free stuff for these people. But I also want to suggest that they bring you something. They bring you cupcakes. They bring you fresh vegetables. They bring you something as an exchange of energy because you will always be able to do deeper work if there's some sort of exchange that happens, acknowledgement of what you're doing. I want to make sure we bring this in that she just said, because I know um, someone who couldn't be here right now, this has been up for them as she says, I attract people with no money. Yep. Let's That's clear true. that for everyone. I, and I'm pretty sure this that is the thing you have. It's it. We can attract. We can. OK, this is the deal. I can clear the pattern. I'm running out of room here. OK, <laughs> of attracting. Now I'm going to say something and you have to roll with me on this. I'm going to call it low vibrational people. And it's not because there's anything wrong with them. I promise you, you cannot take that as Lisa's being judgmental. I am not. But there is a frequency that we vibrate with and all right and two and when we are at a low vibration what comes to us is what we are comfortable with so in order to stop this and you have to be true to yourself and when they do come say you have to figure out a way to navigate this is it one day that you, a month that you're going to book these people are you only going to do um you can narrow it down in time wise i don't know what time of healing you do, but you can make them 30 minute sessions versus an hour and a half. You know, so see, you're honoring your time, you're honoring your gift, and you're honoring the individual with no money. I'm going to call it out as low vibration. Please do not think that I'm judging these people because I'm not. But you do have to then change the way you do it. So if you're unwilling to change by putting a boundary here, then you're going to keep repeating the pattern. Yeah. You have to be willing to change. Yeah. So this is going to be a powerful clearing because um, the how you do it doesn't matter until you've cleared the energy. Because once you clear the energy, it's almost like you can't keep them away. So that's right. All right last one. This is Alita's and Alita's here. So Alita, if I, if I don't fully express this properly, please feel free to text it or te uh, clarify it here. 
but um, she, it sounds like what from the different comments, and I love seeing your comments, Lita, she's got some patterns that are, um, she knows what she's doing, and there's a lot of self-sabotaging patterns, the always getting ready to get ready, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think I saw something else about, um, Oh, she lets everything else come in and take priority. Yeah. But girlfriend calls her that she hasn't seen. She's off taking care of the girlfriend. Let's go to the zoo. Let's go have fun. Sure, I'll go do that. Yeah, you got to stop that girl. Okay. <laughs> you have to say no. It's a pattern of the fear of missing out and letting other people down. And um, you got to honor the fact that you she has a gift for making money. And you just got to honor that. And, and give attention to it. So Rihanna, I don't know if you saw the first part, but you might want to go back and listen to the first part too, where I talked about the three shifts, because there's a shift about what you put your attention on is what can grow. So if you're putting your attention on all these distractions and you're allowing yourself to get pulled in so many different ways, you're not really giving yourself the gift of attention. So this sounds like a great one to clear. Anyone else know that one's up for them? We should clear for everybody. <laughs> yeah, a few hands just went up. Okay. okay, so I feel like we've got a lot to roll with here. And if we haven't exactly stepped on anybody, just know that we are getting all of this through energy. So uh, everything is going to come into the, the circle here. So Lisa, how much time do you need for this part? So I want to make sure we well, give this is what I want to ask you. Okay, I'm going to get into my zone and I'm going to be releasing and I'm not going to be paying attention to time. Okay. And when I get in this, I kid you not, I have no, I cannot, I, time and space leave me. So you might just have to interrupt me and say, Lisa, sure. we're done. Okay. You want me to text you? Do you want me to message you or do text you have your me. phone on? Text okay, me. I'll text you. It's time to mm -hmm. enter your phone. But let's say maybe, can we do it in about 10 or 15 minutes? All, I can't do it in 10 minutes. Okay. 15? Yeah. yeah. We all good for 15 minutes? Everybody okay. good? I mean, maybe right. I can, I'll do it as fast as I can, but what I want to do is, right, when I release it, I want to replace it. I want you to leave with this clearing, uh, feeling empowered, and I want to clear these procrastination patterns and disbelief, and, and what I'm doing is, you know, heads up, sometimes you'll hear me repeating myself. It's not because I forgot what I said. It's because I haven't got it yet, all right? It's because there's more in another quadrant. When I'm done, and I'm going to go through a lot of different things, um, I want to replace it. And, um, and I might even have you say an affirmation at the end to integrate. Okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Thanks. All right. all right. So what I, we're all connected. I am connected. And I would suggest that you just sit with your cl eyes closed. I'm going to be moving. I'm very distracting. In fact, maybe we should just turn me off visually. Um, because I don't want you to be distracted. I want you to be in it and not see me moving my hands, doing weird stuff that is just about Lisa. Thank okay. you. All right, cool. All right, here we go. Releasing the inherited pattern of fearing who you are. Releasing the inherited fear from the DNA tissues, the fibers and the tapestry of your physical body. I'm releasing it on your mother's side first. Releasing the fear of being seen. Releasing the fear of speaking up. Releasing inherited low self-worth on your mother's side. Going back all generations of time back to the originator. Releasing it from the DNA tissues and the fibers and the tapestry of your physical body. Releasing inherited low self-worth where it's holding you back, where it's causing you to feel stuck. There we go. Releasing also on your father's side the fear of stepping out of your comfort zone, the fear of changing professions, the fear of doing it wrong, the fear of letting the family and the community down. So there's a lot of community judgment. Now I'm picking that up with the girl in particular in Africa, this judgment of community. And we have it here, don't worry. Every one of you have a fear of being judged, but releasing the inherited pattern of the community judging you because you're making money doing what comes easy for you. So releasing the inherited belief that you cannot make money doing what comes easy. You have also got people in struggling, struggle like if you struggle and you overwork and you overdo. So clearing the inherited pattern of overworking, overdoing, overcompensating in order to be validated in earning money. Releasing the fear of, being, of making money. 
releasing the fear of being successful, releasing the fear of added responsibility if your income rises, releasing the fear of being seen, known, and heard as financially abundant. All right, that was good. Releasing the inherited pattern and fear of, of being left out. But see what this has happened is you've been left out of situations, but you're automatically now, I don't know if you're aware of it, you'll just automatically leave yourself out of a situation because you expect on a subconscious level that you're going to be left out. So releasing the inherited pattern and your pattern, every one of you releasing this pattern of taking yourself out of success because of a false belief that it's too hard or that you can't do it. Releasing the false belief that you can't do it. Releasing the false belief that it will never happen for you. Releasing the pattern of being left out, of not being seen, of not being um, valued. So releasing undervalued. Releasing the pattern of being undervalued for your gifts and talents. Releasing from your throat chakra unheard. Releasing this pattern of being unheard, misunderstood and not valued. Oh, we got some used energy going on here. So releasing the expectation that you will be used, releasing the pattern of being used, releasing the pattern of over giving in order for your value. All right. This tells me something. Releasing the inherited pattern of people pleasing for your worth, releasing the pattern of people pleasing for your value and your worth, releasing the pattern of putting everyone else first and then being uncomfortable with spending time and, and honoring yourself. Releasing the inherited pattern of overwhelm. This is a burden energy, everyone. Releasing the overwhelm of stepping out of your comfort zone. Releasing the overwhelm of making a sale. Releasing the overwhelm of increasing your prices or looking for a new job. Releasing the overwhelm <clears throat> of having your own business. Releasing the overwhelm of making the phone call for the business, releasing the overwhelm of asking for the sale, releasing the inherited money block because of the fear of asking, releasing the fear of asking, releasing the negative opinions and judgments of others. This is a burden energy in the lineage for everybody, releasing the inherited burden of the opinions and judgments from negative people, releasing the fear of being misunderstood, releasing the fear of people telling you no, releasing the negative attachment where it causes you to be powerless in your ask because of your fear of being rejected. There we go, releasing unaccepted, where you have been unaccepted in your life. It's this lineage too, where you've been unaccepted, where you've had to hide your gifts and your talents, releasing the pattern of being a chameleon. Somebody's getting a huge aha here. Releasing the pattern of being a chameleon, of fitting in to everyone else's format and they're, they're, you're a chameleon, releasing the pattern of being a chameleon for the fear of being that people won't like you for who you really are. So releasing the pattern of wearing a mask, releasing the pattern of having to fit in, releasing the need to be popular. There we go. Releasing the need to be liked by everyone. Uh-huh. Releasing on all levels and dimensions, all negative attachments to the opinions and judgments of others. Releasing the pattern of giving your power away to what you believe people are going to think. Releasing the pattern of attracting low vibrational people to prove your worth. Releasing the need to help everyone. So I want you to implement something into your consciousness here. Just because you can does not mean you have to. Just because you can does not mean you have to. It is impossible to do everything, right? So releasing the inherited pattern of attracting emotionally unavailable people, mm -hmm. releasing the inherited pattern of doing and being everything for everyone else but yourself, releasing the uncomfortableness of building your own business, releasing the uncomfortableness of stepping outside of your comfort zone, releasing the uncomfortableness of charging people for your gifts and talents. I promise you, you will have more energy when you charge. I promise you, if you have needed to raise your prices for several years, if you raise your price, you'll have more energy. Yep. So replacing, releasing the pattern of attracting low vibrational people, there we go. That shifted. Now releasing the guilt. 
of charging, releasing the guilt of having a business doing what comes easy for you, releasing inherited scarcity, releasing this scarcity from the DNA tissues, the fibers, and the tapestry of your physical body, releasing the scarcity of time because you're overgiving to everyone else, releasing the scarcity of time because you work full time and do something else, releasing the scarcity of time as a false belief and an identity that doesn't serve you. Releasing the scarcity of self-love. Hmm. Yeah. Releasing the scarcity of seeing and appreciating and giving gratitude for who and what you are. Releasing the false belief that you should be doing more. I want to share something with you that I'm picking up. Every single one of you are doing the best you can. Every single one of you are doing the very best you can. Give gratitude for that. Acknowledge yourself for that. And know and trust that it is in your divine right to show up. It is in your divine right to have money flow to you. It is in your divine right to have prosperity flow. Releasing the fear of rejection. Releasing inherited shame. From the DNA tissues, the fibers, and the tapestry of your physical body. Releasing this from the father's side. Because of humiliation and embarrassment. Embarrassment. Releasing the false belief that you need to know more, be in business longer in order to be an expert. Releasing the pattern of holding yourself back as an, ex as an expert. Releasing the belief that this is as good as it gets. Releasing the belief that there isn't more for you. Releasing the uncomfortableness of asking. There we go. Now that's shifting out of that throat chakra. Releasing the fear of asking. Releasing the false inherited belief that if you ask, you're being selfish. Releasing the belief that you are to be seen and not heard. Releasing the belief that your worth is validated when you help everybody else. You can get paid to help everybody. You can get paid. And then you can also give up service in other ways, but it can't be all of your identity. That's why you feel the way you do. All right. Melanie, how am I doing on time? You're fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> Declare a little more. Yeah, I do. But how much time do I have? Well, I think we can take about another five minutes. To okay. Do it. All right. Here we go. I'm back. I'm coming back in, guys. Take <laughs> a deep breath in. Deep breath in. A little bit more. Hold it. Now release it. Just cleanse that out. There we go. <clears throat> Releasing the block of being invisible. <clears throat> Releasing the invisibility block where you're not being seen my high vibrational people that will see the value of who you are, releasing this invisibility like cloak because you think it serves your highest good. So releasing the fear of being bullied, releasing the fear of being seen, releasing the fear of people mocking you. There we go. Releasing the fear of being turned down, releasing an inherited pattern of feeling low self-worth, releasing this low self-worth, as a pattern of staying low, being low, being invisible, and always supporting other people. So releasing the feeling of being unsupported, because you're always supporting everyone else. Releasing deep insecurity. Yeah. Releasing self, and I'm going to call this out as overly self-conscious. And this is a big deal. Because see, if we are overly aware and overly self-conscious, then we can't get out of our comfort zone. So releasing this pattern of being overly self-conscious. You know what? It's not about you. How's that? When you get up and speak and you make that offer, it's not about you. Are you kidding? It's about everyone that you can teach. It's about the lives you're going to transform. It's about, it's the reason you have the gifts you have, everyone. So it is not about you. So clearing the belief that your offer is about you. Nope. Clearing the belief that you can't be seen. Clearing the belief that a rejection is about you. See, it's not about you. Clearing the negative primary core belief that, that your life and your purpose and your mission is all about you and you, the perception that people have of you. There we go. It shifted, everyone. There we go. All right. Releasing the pattern of staying small and living in smallness. Releasing the need to stay and live below your full life potential because of a fear that other people will be uncomfortable if you're empowered. Now, this usually happens with family. So releasing the pattern of feeling like you can't be more powerful than or more seen than everybody else in the family. Releasing the pattern of being stuck in your comfort zone. 
releasing the fear of success releasing the fear of what else is out there, releasing the fear of the unknown, releasing the fear of what if, releasing the belief that you must know the end from the beginning. You do not. False belief, everybody, alert. Releasing the false belief that you have to know how you're going to do what you need to do in order to get to where you want to be. That is one hindrance to setting five-year, 10-year goals is because then we think we have to know all the steps to get there. And when we live in this controlling belief, we block the universe's opportunities for us. So releasing the pattern of controlling our success, releasing the need to control everything and everyone in our life. Oh yeah, got lots of control going on here. All right. So releasing this fear of success, um, releasing guilt, releasing this guilt, inherited guilt, see, for showing up for who you are, releasing the belief that if you talk about yourself, you're bragging. You do have to talk about yourself, people. You have to share your wins. So releasing the attachment to bragging, releasing the false belief that everyone's gonna think that you're bragging and blah, 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 releasing this overly awareness stuff around your business, releasing the false belief that it is, um, <laughs> that you are being um, selfish to make more money. Releasing the belief that you are selling your gifts by selling your money. Releasing the false belief that you are going to um, somehow be judged by source energy if you sell your gifts and your talents. That's inherited. That's inherited. There we go. All right. Now replacing this, everyone. Replacing this as the dews of heaven will distill upon your soul. There we go that you will know and trust that it is in your divine right to make money with your gifts and talents. It is in your divine right to have fun, replacing this with an increase of financial abundance, ease in speaking your truth, own your truth, replacing this, that your body will accept healing, that your body will accept your life purpose and that you might manifest it by charging people, that you might have a strong voice. There we go. That feels wonderful. Um, Hold on, I want to look something up. I have an idea. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Here we go. Replacing this to be eloquent in your words, to be unattached to your words, to have them flow through your throat chakra because you know and trust that what you have to offer will help them, but you will be unattached to their response because you know and trust it might not be the right, night, right time. And replacing this that you can have a pause button. You have every right to say, um, that it might not be a right fit. See, it's very per important that you give yourself permission that it's not a right fit for you. It's very important. Replacing this, that you might be a receiver of increase of financial abundance, an increase of high vibrational people to see the value in what you do. It is in your divine right to be spiritual and prosperous. It is in your divine right to make more money than your spouse. It doesn't mean that they're, they can't own it, Okay. But it is in your divine right. There is no reason that you should be holding yourself back. Replacing this to know that you are lovable, to be open-minded and thicker skinned around the past, to be a go-getter and replacing this that you might be fearless and courageous, that you might be able to live in your magnificence, that you might follow your promptings. See, you have to be true to yourself. You have to follow those promptings and that you might know it is again, your divine right to live in your essence to be decisive, there we go, to expand your gift of awareness and own your power. You are empowered. You are safe to make more money. You are safe to speak up and um, you're safe to continue to look elsewhere. You are safe to go out into the world in a bigger way. Ooh, I love this. I hope you're feeling it. it, it okay, let me preface this. If you're not feeling it, it doesn't matter because it really is working, but know that on my level, my end, it is really powerful, okay? There we go. Um, I, um, all right, I want you to say this, okay? And then I'll close with a little few more things. So out loud, I want you to repeat this. Um, I completely integrate the new awarenesses and insights that have been made in this session. As I know better, I do better. People are happy to pay me for serving their highest good. All the right people 
are constantly being attracted to me. There we go. People are happy to pay me for serving their highest good. Now it integrated. Very good. Okay, one more. I'm not quite done. I'm wrapping up though. <laughs> Connecting your heart, mind, body, and soul, and raising your vibration to love and higher. Raising the vibration to be a money magnet, to take action in income producing the activities, raising your vibration with clarity and insight that you might know and trust that it is in your divine right, that it is easier for you to have fun making money, to enjoy closing those sales, to know and trust that, you know, it is what it is. And everybody is living in their own, you know, just know and trust that all the right people are going to be attracted to you, that it is these opportunities that you must accept them. Okay, meaning you must honor this and, and do the sale. You have to make that sale, guys. What I mean by that is, let me say, it, you have to make your offer. That's what I'm trying to say, say. So in closing, replacing this, that you might feel supported, that you might know that you are fully supported in your business, personal, spiritual, and financial abundance. And so it is. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. Take a breath. Back on. All right, let's start your video again there, darling. All right, let me see how I do that. Ready? Start video, put glasses on. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Oh, wow. I'm sweating. So, <laughs> I know, it creates a lot of energy, Ooh, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so first of all, thank you. Um, I would love if, if anybody wants to share like anything that shifted for them just really quick so we can honor time for Lisa. Uh, and I'll be checking in with you in the Facebook group. If you already felt a big shift or had an aha, we'd love to wrap up with hearing it. I'll read it for you. Um, Lisa, I know uh, Kamala already mentioned that she started your affirmation. So it tells me hey. not your, your money accelerator tool. Can we mm -hmm. just take a couple of minutes real quick to tell people if they, you know, if they're like, okay, we're moving a lot of stuff, but I want to go deeper. I want to clear even more. And I know you really recommend that people do a series of these affirmations to keep this integration getting stronger and stronger. And I know your money uh, accelerator tool would be a very powerful way to do that. Um, okay. I'm going to put the uh, the link to it if you feel like I want to keep going with this, uh, how to get it, but yeah. tell what they're getting. Let me tell you what you're getting. So I created this because there isn't enough time in my day, right? And I want to be able to help everyone. And there's some people that have never worked with me one on one, and they have had amazing shifts with these. So I'm going to give you a quick example. I work with somebody that's a business coach, and I've never worked with him one on one. And he called me to, and he bought this series. And he called me to tell me that he had been charging, I think, I don't know, 18,000 or something like that for his coaching program. And he pretty much doubled it mm -hmm. after he did them. And see what it does is, this is what it does. It's going to release things like we just did today. So in them, there's three powerful healings. And um, I, what I do in these is I connect the subconscious mind with the conscious mind. Because see, our subconscious is what holds us back, okay? It doesn't know the truth from the lie. So if you get the subconscious on board, transformation can happen. But affirmations alone aren't going to do it because, see, there's these vibrational frequencies within our energy system and our body. And so we got to release them. These release that. All right. <clears throat> so the first one is releasing inherited money blocks. The second one is around our own stuff with money. OK, so let me give you an example. A client says to me, Lisa, I spend everything I make. And I'm like, okay, this is a learned, I knew it, it's a learned behavior. And what it was is her father had told her, and, and he was joking around, you better go spend that money in your pocket. Or your, your po your, it's like your money has a, your pocket has a hole in it. You'll lose it if you don't spend it. And so she would run to the store and spend every penny she made, every penny, you know, her nickels, her parents gave her. And so she still was in this pattern. So I titled the second one, Honoring Money. Because the other way it'll show up, you and you might relate to this, is maybe you spend because everybody else needs the money more than you do. So you're helping everybody else, right? Maybe you, there's a lot of different ways. So this is around clearing your own personal blocks, learned behaviors. <clears throat> now, in every one of these, I am replacing them 
to attract more money. Just know that. In the third audio, it's all about attracting money. What's blocking money from coming in? So the whole series is clearing these energetic blocks so that you can be more powerful, you can show up in the world, in your business in a bigger way, and you can make more money. You'll be more confident at the end of this series. This is a program though, it's a month. You're gonna be in this, you're gonna be in a portal. Um, you can ask me questions because I'm gonna give you permission to reach out to me. But um, this is really powerful. There's a protocol to it, just do it as it says, and you'll have huge shifts. Uh, and I've done a lot of work with Lisa and uh, just it's extraordinary what can happen. Things that you know you need to remove blocks on and things that you don't know you need to remove blocks on. Yeah. So if you're listening in and you're, you're not seeing the link, it's uh, I think our team created a special link just to make mm -hmm. it easy to find. It's MelanieBenson.com forward slash attract more money. So that points towards this money accelerator program. Mm -hmm. Um Lisa, what is it? 297? It's 197. 197. Okay, so. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I go and I speak in public and I'm speaking from the stage, I literally sell these, these three things for $500. This is what I sell for $500. This is an amazing price. Now, yeah. I want to give you some permission to do it, something. <clears throat> it says meditation. Don't get hung up on that. You can be multitasking in this because they're an hour long. They're very deep. They go deep into the DNA and your cells. So you cannot overdo these. You cannot be A plus personality in this and do them every day. You'll get sick. You'll catch a cold. They're too hard on your adrenals. You have to give 48 hours, but there's directions in it. Okay. So <clears throat> it'll make sense when you read the directions, but this is what I want you to do. The first time you listen, to each one of the meditations, I want you to stick with me. I take you through a grounding exercise. It prepares the body for healing. The second stage is I'm putting your body in an awakened type of hypnosis. And that's where I'm connecting your subconscious. So I'm putting, I'm giving you a visualization. Just do the visualization with me, okay? The second time you listen to it, your body's already on board, okay? You don't have to sit there through it. But this is the deal. You do have to have me plugged into both ears and you can be multitasking. You can go walk the dogs. You can go to sleep if you want. Okay. Don't drive that. I don't want you to do, especially if you've ever fallen asleep to my voice, please don't drive. All right. You can sit at the computer and write that book that you haven't been wanting to do. You can multitask with these. You do not have to sit in one place for an hour. Perfect. Okay. I love it. Yeah. So um, I want to just acknowledge a few breakthroughs and ladies oh, you want to share anything before you wrap up, just let me know. Uh, I'll open up your line or you can type it in. Um, Alita said, thank you. I prof found profound emotional experience on things I didn't expect. Uh, You're welcome. Like she had a couple great breakthroughs and Lisa used my inner guidance words during this to clear powerful uh, wow. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A few people were saying, thank you, Lisa. So, um, lots of great breakthroughs there. And I really want to acknowledge each of you for staying with it and tuning in and going through the whole process and, you know, keep doing the work, keep mm -hmm. moving through the processes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Lisa's often told me, and, you know, I know many people that have worked with her have said, you may notice a lot of different things shift in this first 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You may notice nothing outwardly shift, but it is already shifted. And yeah. so just tune into and continue to hold on to these new words, these new frameworks, mm -hmm. keep, mm -hmm. you know, keep those present of mind. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to go forward and do the money accelerator uh, meditations, mm -hmm. um, don't do them for 48 hours, but go ahead and get them, <laughs> get them yeah. and then start using them in 48 yeah. hours get them. And um, then you can kind of block out your calendar, you know, every, every 48 hours, because you're going to listen to each one a minimum of two times. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And what I want you to notice now is like, how does your body feel? Does it just feel lighter? Does it right? I see shaking. That's a shift. You go for a walk or you maybe you might even experience, this is my favorite. You find you're finding more parking spots easier. 
things like that. Just notice those things. Maybe you're going to notice a dime or a penny. Pick it up, honor it. It doesn't matter if it's a penny. Pick it up, wash your hands if you have a germ phobia. Wash your hands, but pick it up, pick up that penny. So Kamala said, thank you so much. I kept feeling energy lifting off me. Oh, so good. that's very exciting. Yeah, yeah you'll probably still feel that. And, and uh -huh. Kendra's shaking her head too. So drink um, water, everybody. Drink water. Lots of water. And avoid the news. So stick, a, stick away, stay away from news media because what's going to happen is I just opened you up and yes, I replaced it, but the news is a negative vibration. So it's like throwing darts into your energy system. So I'm sorry, we probably should have forewarned you about that to give you a choice. But if you could avoid the news, it would be really helpful for your healing process. And then I'll just wrap up with letting you know that Rihanna, who was in South Africa, said that uh, she felt so much heaviness lift off her chest. Oh, and it was such a powerful experience. She does have a little bit of a follow-up question, but I just want to allow everybody who needs to leave, you know, it's okay if you need to go. <laughs> uh, if anybody else has a question or anything they want to clear, please just let me know really quick so I can wrap up. But Lisa wants to, or I'm sorry, Rihanna wants to know if um, the uh, money accelerator can help with removing blocks that are preventing her gifts and abilities to open up even more. Yeah, because you have limiting um, beliefs about, about your gifts. Okay. So my suggestion is because the first thing you got to get over is charging. <laughs> That's your very first thing. And this will help you with that. And then, you know what, there's other things that I have that can help you too, but let's clear these beliefs around money first and, um, and start at that, those root causes. And then you're going to get more comfortable and more self-confident with who you are. And you can, it's not the only time you can work with me. There's other things you can do. Awesome. Okay. Well, Lisa, I am profoundly um, grateful for the gift that you shared with our community here today. And I know the leaders that are here from the mastermind, you know, anything we can do to release any known and unknown blocks, you know, we've got to, we've got to open you guys up and get you fully out there in the world. Uh, again, if you're going to pick up her money accelerator tool, which I highly recommend, uh, it's melaniebenson.com forward slash attract more money is where you'll find that very special $197 deal, which mm -hmm. you won't find it on my website. It's not there. Yeah. <laughs> so don't go to my website. Yeah. So, and if you guys lose the link or anything, let me know. I'll, I'll make sure you get it and we'll shoot a little email out uh, tomorrow probably. And just, you know, make sure you know how to get it, but um, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I've loved every minute of it. And great questions and great icky stuff to have come up. It's all good, right? It's all perfect, right? It's all perfect. <laughs> I love it. For those of you that tuned in on Facebook, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, our Amplifier Success community is such a beautiful place to grow and evolve and amplify our gifts in the world. So we'll keep having great resources like this come in. But um, please take advantage of Lisa's gift. Uh, I really want to challenge you to do the inner work so you can do the outer impact that you are here to do. So bye everybody.